Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's video, I'm going to teach you why you should not delete records from your database. Today's question comes from Ben from Jamestown, PA, a Silver member. Ben asks, I've got a lot of customers in my database that I know will no longer be buying from me. Some have retired, some are deceased. I need to keep their records in my table for accounting purposes, but I don't want them cluttering up my reports and combo boxes. Can I remove them without deleting them? Same thing goes with discontinued products. Yes, Ben, I get asked this question quite a lot. You've got a bunch of old products or old customers, and they're just taking up space in your database. And for any number of reasons, you might want to get them out of there, but you got to be careful because sometimes if you delete, for example, a product, and your products are linked to your orders, now deleting those products might cascade delete your order information, and that's not good. So let's talk about pros and cons of deleting information from your database and how to handle it properly. Let's talk about why you would want to delete information from your database in the first place. The first reason people give me is they're getting low on disk space, but hard drives are cheap today. If your two terabyte drive is filling up, go buy a four terabyte drive. It's not that expensive, especially if you're running a business. Second, you may be approaching that two gigabyte access limit. Each file, each ACCDB file for Microsoft Access can only have two gigabytes of information in it, which really isn't that much. However, that's not really a good excuse either because you can split the database and link multiple files together. You can put tables in different database files. I've got videos to show you how to split your database, so that's not a big deal either, unless you've got a single table that is approaching that two gigabyte limit. Now, a valid reason for wanting to delete information is to keep your database running fast. If you've got big tables with lots of useless information in them that you're not really using all the time, it will slow your database down, especially if you're running over a network. So by getting rid of some of that extraneous information, you can reduce your network traffic. You'll also increase your indexing speed. If you have indexed fields in your tables, you got indexed things that you search on a lot, like first name, last name, company name, social security number, that kind of stuff. Every time you add or edit information, Access has to rebuild those indexes. So that will definitely slow your database down as well. So removing information that you don't need can speed things up. You may be legally required to delete information if someone requests it. I know the EU and some local U.S. jurisdictions have laws that say if a customer wants their information removed, you've got to remove it. But you might not want to remove the customer's information completely because then again, all of his orders might disappear. So you have to have a way of handling that. And of course, there's sensitive data, credit card information, medical data, that kind of stuff. So how do you deal with that? Credit card info, for example, even if the customer requests that you remove their card information from your active database, you may need to keep it in a backup secure folder because let's say they do a chargeback and the credit card company says, hey, this customer did a chargeback. Sometimes all they give you is the card number. They don't give you any other information about the customer. So if you can't search your database for that credit card information, you'll have no idea who it is. So you may not want to completely delete it, but put it in a backed up, sensitive, highly secured folder so at least a manager can go back and look for it. So these are more business questions that you have to answer for your organization. How do you want to handle this stuff? Now, there are reasons why not to delete information. Number one reason, you need to keep records for historical purposes, accounting, reporting, legal information. If you delete a customer, completely delete the record, and that customer is linked to your order tables, now all your accounting information's off, right? Especially if you're using cascade deletes, which we'll talk about in a minute. You might need to go back and look up old information. So you discontinued a product that you haven't sold in four years, but a customer who bought it six years ago comes in and says, hey, I need information on this product that I bought, and now you've deleted it, so you got no idea what it is. So if you have a need ever in the future to look up that information, don't delete it. And again, you may be legally required to keep some information, accounting data, tax information, employee withholdings, regulatory authorities, discovery for lawsuits if you're party to a lawsuit, all that stuff. If you delete it, like permanently delete it, you could get in trouble legally. Stuff that's okay to delete. Temporary data you'll never need again. For example, real old emails from inactive customers. You got stuff from 10 years ago. I have all the emails going back from my customers from when I started 
this current business, which was 2004. I've got all that history in there, and that's a pretty big table, but I've got it outside of my main access database. It's in a backup file, so I can still go back and get it. Like Gmail, for example, they save everything. <laughs> they, got, they got tons and tons of space, so they don't care. But if you've got inactive customers that you haven't done business with in a few years and you know you're never going to hear from them again, then you, know, you might want to delete all that old correspondence if it's unnecessary. Log files, for example, that you've already analyzed. you got log files from your website from two years ago. Do you still need all of that data? I sometimes hold on to it for about a year because I can go back and look for you know, where did this customer find me, if they become a good customer. But after a certain time, saving all of that information, it, it takes a lot of space. Old email batches, for example, when I send out an email newsletter, right, my database creates a record for each copy that goes out to each customer. And I hang on to it for a little while, but do I really need to save all 30,000 of those records in my sent email folder? No, I don't. I, I purge it after about a month. And any data that can be recalculated, you can get rid of. For example, I've had uh, reporting tables that I've built for clients before where they're, they're once a month they crunch through the whole month's worth of data and they put together like a balance sheet or, or account summary, and that gets stored in a separate summary table, okay? That information, if need be, could be recalculated based on their historical data. So I really don't need to save years and years worth of information in that summary table. Now, before you delete information, ask yourself, will you ever need to restore this in the future? Am I ever going to have to go back and look this up? And if you're absolutely sure it's no, then go ahead and delete it. Before you delete stuff, though, make sure you back it up. Here's my famous slide that I always put in my videos. Back up your data before you do anything relating to deleting stuff. Back it up. Use cascade deletes very carefully. Now, for those of you who've taken my Access Expert classes, uh, there's something called cascade deletes. All right, And that's where you can set it up so that, for example, if you've got an order with line items, and those are in two separate tables, if you delete the order, all the line items go away. Okay, that sometimes is handy because if you're sure you want to delete the order, you don't want all those line items sticking around. But I've seen some people that set up their databases using cascade deletes where they really shouldn't be. For example, customers to orders. And they're thinking, well, if I delete the customer, yeah, I delete all those orders. But eh, now you've just messed up all your accounting. So you got to be very careful when you use cascade deletes. So the bottom line, when should you delete? Eh, it depends. Depends on the situation, and that's something you kind of have to answer from a business perspective. Now, as far as the computer goes, there's two kinds of deletion. There's a hard delete and a soft delete. A hard delete is where you actually remove the record. You're, you're deleting the record from the table. And we do these kinds of deletes to keep our databases small and running fast. That's where you're purging old log files and getting rid of stuff that you no longer need in your primary database. Then we have what's called a soft delete. Soft delete is where the record stays there, but you just mark it inactive. For example, a customer who's deceased. You know he's not going to buy things anymore. You don't want to lose all of his history, just in case. So you mark him inactive. That way he's not cluttering up your reports. When you go to pick a customer from your customer list, for example, he doesn't show up there because he's not going to be placing any new orders. He's no longer on your mailing list. Those kinds of things. You want to keep his information but you don't want him showing up in the rest of the system. Same thing with employees, right? You fire an employee, you don't want him showing up in the timesheet table anymore, so you mark him terminated. So really, as far as the computer is concerned, if you want to work with soft deletes, it's just a matter of changing your terminology. Customers don't get deleted, they become marked inactive, right? Products aren't deleted, they're marked discontinued. Employees are terminated, and old bosses, well, they're just, they're just sent out to pasture. That's where old bosses go. That's, a, that's an old boss joke. Okay. So whether to delete something or not is a decision you have to make. And again, think about whether or not you'll ever need this information in the future. All right, old log files from your website, yeah, delete them. Get rid of them. Once you've analyzed it and you've got all the information out of it you want, don't keep that information around. Unless hard drive space is no, no concern for you, then sure, dump them into an external file somewhere. Okay. Generally, with your access database, you're going to soft delete stuff. You're going to mark your customers inactive. Okay. So how do we do that? This is what I'm going to show you how to do in the video. We're going to add an is active field to our tables, the tables that you care about. We'll just do customers, but you can do products, you can do employees, you can do everything. All right, we'll add a checkbox to our form so we can mark them inactive or not. We'll set allow deletions to false. That way, 
our users can't accidentally delete someone. If they try to delete them, you know, they, they click on the sidebar and hit delete. Nope, can't do it. You have to mark them inactive. Then we'll use a query to hide inactive records in our forms, lists, and combo boxes. So when you open up the customer form, you won't have to see all of these inactive customers. Then for the members in the extended cut video, I'm going to show you how to archive information. Don't delete it, archive it. Move it to a different database. We'll add an inactive date field, okay, so we know when it was marked inactive. Then after something is inactive for 30 days, we'll have it archived. We'll copy it to a different table in a different database file so it's not taking up space in your main database. All right, we'll remove that data from the primary tables. We'll copy that record, all that information, to a backup database file. Now, if necessary, you can still bring those two tables together. If you have to do a report on current customers plus inactive customers, I'll show you how to use a union query. You can union two tables together if the fields are similar. And this will be covered in the extended cut. But for you guys in this video, let me show you how to mark customers inactive and to work with that. Okay, so here I am in my simple customer database. This is the free database template you can download from my website, by the way. I'll put a link down below. But... It's real simple. It's got a customer table, first name, last name, email, and so on. And in here, I've got a field called is active. That's a yes, no field. All right. And this just simply indicates whether this customer is active or not. The same field can now be found on my customer form right over here, is active. Now, any user can still come in here, though, and delete a customer. For example, here's Walter Jones. They can click over here and hit delete on the keyboard. And now Walter Jones is gone. Sometimes you'll get a warning message that says, are you sure you want to delete the customer? I've got my warning messages turned off. But still, we don't want them to be able to do that at all. Okay? So we want to disable the ability to delete records from the customer form. So I'm going to go into Design View. Go to the Forms Properties. Under Data, find Allow Deletions and say No. Okay? We don't want them to be able to delete any records. Now if I come in here and select that and hit delete on my keyboard, nothing happens. All right, that's how you prevent deletion. So if they want to actually physically delete someone, they're going to have to go to you, the developer or the admin or somebody who knows how to open up the table and come in here and delete them from the table. But you shouldn't do that. You should soft delete them and just mark them not active anymore. Okay. Now, how do I see just active or just inactive customers or all of them? Well, we can use a query for that. Create, query design, bring in your customer table, bring in the star, that'll bring in all the fields, and then find is active. I'm going to click off the show box so we don't see duplicates, otherwise we'll see two of them because there's already one in here, right? Now, for criteria, just put in here whether you want to see active or not active. Okay, so I'll put in here true. All right, that'll show me all the active customers. And I could save this as customer active queue. And that will now show me all of the active customers only, right? Customer active queue, there's only the active ones. And if you want to make one for your inactive customers, just do the same thing. Copy, paste, all right? I'll copy this query here, paste it. We'll make this customer inactive queue. And then I'll edit this guy, design view, change this to false. Save that. And now I can open that up, and there's my inactive customers. And of course, if you want to see all of them, just open up the customer table. Now, when you open up your customer form, you're going to still see all of them, active or inactive. And that's okay, but nine times out of ten, you may only want to browse through your active customers. You don't want to see all the inactive ones. So what we could do is put a little checkbox here. And that checkbox will say, show active customers. And if we uncheck it, it will show the inactive customers. So let's go to design mode here on the main menu form. I'm going to right click on this button, go to build event. My code builder opens up. Now this is the one line of code that opens up that customer form. It's do command open form customer F. It's real simple. People who are afraid of programming, don't be afraid of programming. It's very easy. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my form. I'm going to add one little checkbox on here. Let's go up to the control box here, find the checkbox, drop it right there. And we're going to call this guy show active. 
And let's make that black so we can actually read it. Okay, let's ch change the name of that checkbox to show active, like that. And we'll make the default value under data set to yes. That way, normally, we'll see just the actives. Now I've got a value here on this form that I can use in my code, right? After do command open form customer f go comma, comma, comma. That brings us to the where condition. All right, now the where condition allows us to specify rules for opening up this form. I can say in here is active equals close your quotes up ampersand show active. All right, what does that do? Well, it sends a rule a criteria, a where condition, whatever you want to call it, to the open form command. It says open up the customer form where the is active field on that form is equal to show active, which is that checkbox. So if this is checked on, it opens up the customers where is active is true. If I check that off, it opens up the customers where in is active equals false. So let's save that. Come back over here. I like to close it and reopen it. Now, click the customer button. And now I can see one of three. And it's filtered, right? There's only my active customers there. You can uncheck that filter box to show all of them if you want to, if you want to see everybody. Okay? This is just an easier way to do it. Check the box off, click. Now I'm seeing only my, my inactive customers. And there's three of those as well. And you can still mark them active or inactive, right? Close that. Now if I go show active, I should see four of them. Come on, update. One, two, three, four. Sometimes you got to go to the last record for it to update. See that? Watch what it did. It's a little bug. See, it doesn't, it doesn't update until you go to the last record. Oh, there, it came in that time. Sometimes this takes forever to fill in. It's not you, it's access. Now, let's say we have a related second table like contacts. I want to keep track of contacts every time I contact my customer. I want to keep a log of that. Same thing with like emails and correspondence and all that. So we'll put that in a different table. All right, so let's create table design. Now, if you don't know about table relationships, go watch my relationships video. I'll put a link down below in the description. Go watch that first if you have never related two tables together. But the contacts table is going to be related to the customers table. We'll have our primary key here, which is contact ID, an auto number. The customer ID will be our foreign key. It's a long integer, right? That's going to store the customer ID in it. Then we'll have the contact date which will be a date time field and we'll default that equals now right that way it puts the current date and time in there we don't have to do anything and then whatever our notes were for the contact that'll be long text so we can store as much as we want in there save that as the contact table okay and if I open that table up it's pretty straightforward you put in here the customer ID. So let's say I call and I'm, if you look at your customer table, right, there's one, two, three, four, and so on. One is Richard, that's me. Two is James. And those numbers go in here, right? So I call up one and then whatever the notes were at this date and time, right? Talked about a new computer, for example. All right. Then a little while later, customer two calls up and says, uh, talked about the weather or whatever, right? Then I call back customer one wants to buy. So you have a, a history of all of your contacts with which with each of these customers. Say so that 10 times fast. With each of your customers. Now let's make a form based on this information. A real quick form. Nothing fancy. So create form design. I'll come in here and set the record source property for this form. We'll make that the contact table. All right. We'll close that up. This doesn't have to be that big. Let's make it smaller. And again, I cover all this in my other tutorials if you've never built forms before. I'm going to give it a splash of color. Let's go with a light yellow like that. Okay, let's go. Let's save it real quick. Save contact F, my contact form. Let's put some data in it. Design, add existing fields. Let's drop all four of these fields right there. All right, I'm going to slide them over to the left. Let's align the text all to the left like that. There you go. Shrink this up a little bit. Let's see here. The contact date's going to be big, so we'll bring that across like that because it's got a date and time in it. Customer ID. Let's replace customer ID with a combo box so I can pick the customer instead of seeing customer ID in there, right? If we take a look at it now, it's going to look like this. I don't want to see that customer ID there. I want to put a combo box there so I can pick the customer from a list. 
right? And if you've never made a relational combo box before, that's where the combo box gets its data from a different table. Then I have videos on that too. Look for relational combo boxes down in the links below in the description. So let's get rid of this guy. Delete. Let's find combo boxes up here in the box, in the control box. It's right there. Drop it there. And again, if you've never made a relational combo box before, I've got videos for that. Go watch that. Look for the link down below in the description below the video. I want this combo box to get the values from another table or query. Next. Which table or query provides the values for the combo box? We're getting our list of values from the customer table. Next. Bring over whatever fields you want to see in the combo box. We need the ID. That's got to go first. Then just first name is fine. Next. How do you want to sort the list? Let's sort by first name. Next. That's what it's going to look like. The key column is hidden. We don't need to see that in the box itself. It'll be there, but it's hidden. Next. Then we're going to store that value in the customer ID in the contact table. Right? We're picking a customer and we're storing that customer ID in the contact table. Next. What label do you want? Customer is fine. And then finish. And there's my combo box right there. Slide that across like that so it's a little bit bigger. Fix your labels up a little bit. Let's see here. Click on that. Click there. Maybe space that out. Contact ID. Yeah, we can make that gray because it's an auto number. I like to make the auto numbers gray. That way the users know they can't change them. And let's save that. Close it. And pop it back open again. And there we go. There's my contact form. All right. Richard, James, and Richard again. All right. Let's close that. Now, if you're browsing through your customers and you want to see just the contacts for this customer, here's how you do it. Let's drop a button on this form. Grab a button. Drop it up here. Yeah, we could use the wizard for this, but let me show you how to do it with just straight VB code. It's only one line of code. Put on here contacts. And that will show the contacts for this customer. Watch this. Right click, build event, pick code builder if it asks you. And in here, just say this. Do command dot open form. Contact F. That's the form I want to open. Comma, comma, comma. We don't need to worry about those optional parameters. And here's the where condition. We're going to say where the customer ID equals ampersand customer ID. That says the customer ID on the contact form, the form we're opening, is equal to the customer ID on the current form. Okay, and if you want to, you might you might see it like that, me.customerID. You don't need that. That's not necessary. You might also see forms like this, forms, customer F, customer ID. That's if you're using a different form to get the value. All right, but we don't need that here either because customer ID is on the form we're on. So that's all you need right there. One line of code to open up the contact form and show the contacts for this customer. This gets replaced with whatever the customer ID is. So if it's customer one, this turns out to be customer ID equals one, and it sends that. That's why we use a little concatenation there. Yeah, I got videos covering string concatenation too, if you don't know what that is. All right, I'll put a link down below. But now that we've got that in place, watch this. I can close this, save changes, open up a customer, hit contacts, and now I see just the contacts for this customer. Okay, if I go browse through them, see, just me. All right, it's filtered. You can unfilter it if you want to and show everybody. But by default, it opens up just the customer that you're on. All right, let's go there. See, now I see just James. And if you're adding a new record, you might want this to default to whatever is open back here. So you can do this. Watch this. Open this up. Go to the Data tab. Let's actually, it's, it's Combo 8 first. Let's change the name of this combo box. Let's call this Customer Combo. And let's set the data. Let's set the default value equals forms customer F customer ID. That's how you default a new value to the value on a different form. So if I open up contacts now and go to a new record, you can see that. See, James. And we're in a new default record. All right, so that's all cool and handy dandy. But what does it have to do with dealing with inactive customers? Well, let's say you've got an add contact button right here on your main menu. So if a customer calls in, you don't got to go searching for their record first and then hitting add customer, right? You can just go right from the main menu. You can just click a button here. It says add new contact. All right, let's design view. Let's copy this button, copy, paste, and then I'll slide it down underneath here. 
right there. All right, and we'll put right here, add new contact. Okay. Now, what I'm going to put down below it is a combo box right here where I can put the customer right in that combo box from this box here, from this little combo box here. Where are we going to get our list of, of active customers from? Well, this active list right here. So let's find a combo box again. Drop it down here. I know we just did this, but that's okay. Look up the values from a table or query. Look up customers, but we're not looking up a customer table. We're going to go to our queries and pick the customer active queue, just our active customers. Okay, next. What fields do you want? Same things. Next. Sort it. First name, that's fine. Next. Now, since it's based on a query, it doesn't automatically hide the key column. But just take this column and go zoop, just like that. Make that width zero. Next. Which is the bound column? In other words, which column has the data that we care about in it? Well, we really care about that customer ID. So hit next. What label would you like? We're going to delete it anyway, so just hit finish. All right, let's get rid of this. And right here is our combo box with our list of active customers in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new contact and put that value in there. All right, let's make sure it works first. Let's open it up. Open up the main menu, drop this down. I'm only seeing my active customers, right? All right, the inactive ones aren't in there. Let's take a look here real quick and see who are the inactive ones. All right, I'm not seeing these guys on the bottom down here. Where the, Yeah, those Lauren and Bill should not be showing up in my list of active customers. All right, now if I go to add new contact, we got to put something in that button there. All right, so design view. Right click, build event. We're in our code builder again. All right, do command dot open form. Let's open up the customer record. Why not? Customer F, comma, 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 where the customer ID equals that combo box down below. Did we name the combo box? I don't think we named it yet. Let's go name that first. Leave this code where it is. Let's open this guy up and make sure we gave it a good name. Forgot to do that first. Oh, yeah, see, it's combo 20. All right, don't forget that. Let's give this guy a good name. Customer combo. Okay, all right, so go back into our code here, right click build event, where customer ID equals customer combo. Now, since I'm opening up and adding a new contact, let's do this, do command dot open form, contact F, comma, 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 just like before, same thing, customer ID equals customer combo. Right now, do this too. Comma, go AC form add. It puts you right in that add mode where you're not browsing all the old ones. You're adding a new one. All right. So basically, this one button you're going to pick a customer first. This one button is going to open up the customer form to this customer, open up the contact form to his, this customer, and then go into add mode. All right. Save that. Let's see what we got. Oh, wrong button. Main menu. All right. Pick a customer. We'll pick James, add new contact. Boom, boom, look at that. It opened up James back here, and it opened it up into a contact form, and we're on a blank new record, and we can add new stuff. See that? The, the bottom line here is this now has my list of active customers in it. All right, and I can pick a customer down here, and, it, and, and I don't have to go through the big, gigantic, long list of all my inactive customers. All right, and this is just one technique. This is one little thing you can do. All right, so here I've showed you how to mark customers active. Only show the active or inactive ones in your forms. Only show the active ones in your combo box or inactive ones if you want to. And then open up different forms, and, and this works with reports too, based on that status. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do. The bottom line is you don't have to physically delete those records in your database unless you're trying to save space. Want to learn more about handling inactive records in your database? In addition to just marking people inactive or their contacts inactive or whatever, I'm going to show you how to actually physically move that information to a different table. And that table could be in a different database file that's linked. So you don't have to worry about it cluttering up your main database. We've already got the is active field to mark whether they're active or not. We're going to add an inactive date field 
So when you mark them inactive, it will note what date that is. Then after 30 days, what we'll do is we'll archive all of their contacts. We're going to keep the customer in the customer table. And just leave them marked inactive because customer information is important. And it's usually not that much data. What we'll do then is we will create a contact archive T to take all of his contacts because we're not going to look him up or talk to him anymore if he's gone, right? We're going to put them all on a different table. All right, we'll create a contact archive T. We'll create an append query to append all of the contacts from customers who have been inactive for 30 days or more. Then we'll run a delete query to delete that same set of data. So all that information is going to go into the archive table out of your main database. And that table can be linked so it can be an external database file so it's not cluttering up your main database. Then I'll show you how to create a union query so that just in case you want to see all that information together, a union query takes two tables that have similar data and puts them all together so it looks like one big long query of information. That's a union query. And that's all covered in the extended cut for members. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.